This is John Paul Rye. I'm coming to you from Tokyo, Japan. I'm gonna cover an article here from the BBC. Might be the first time ever for me, actually, from them. Why Joe Rogan's exclusive Spotify deal matters. Joe Rogan has signed an exclusive deal with Spotify, which will see his podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, disappear from all other platforms. And right now on YouTube, he's got over 8.5 million subscribers, which is a pretty damn big number. The multi-year deal is believed to be worth a hundred million, according to the Wall Street Journal. Now somebody once asked me, how come YouTube is the biggest platform? How come other platforms like BitChute or anything else isn't taken off, isn't matching it? And what somebody told me was, until some of the bigger names leave the platform exclusively, the platform's gonna stay on top. For example, if PewDiePie got an exclusive deal with another platform, well, then he'd take a good portion of his fan base with him. So now that Joe Rogan is leaving YouTube, he'll take a portion of his fan base with him. Now, 8 million subscribers for a platform which has billions isn't going to do too much, but hypothetically, if a lot of people like Joe started leaving, then maybe you'd see some dents start to form. And there's one thing I really like about this. He says he's going to have complete creative control. So it's not like they're buying him for his face and his voice and his reputation. They said, just do your thing, make the money, basically. They want me to just continue doing it the way I'm doing it right now. I'm excited to have the support of the largest audio platform in the world, and I hope you folks are there when we make the switch. So, if you don't know who Joe Rogan is, they go over it real quick. Basically, he is a stand-up comedian, TV host from Fear Factor, I remember, and a podcaster, of course. He invites a wide range of guests, including actors, musicians, comedians, politicians, and conspiracy theorists onto the show, which has gardened a huge audience. Last year, the podcast was downloaded 190 million times per month. Rogan has previously advocated for a long-form media and his own podcast episodes regularly run to two or three hours. The controversial entertainer also has 8.4 million subscribers to his YouTube channel. Now this was written at the end of May and he's got 8.6 million right now, which has up until now shown the interviews in video form. This will stop when a new Spotify deal kicks in. But he has also attracted criticism. Rogan has been accused of making sexist, racist, and transphobic comments in his podcast. And I think he could do, should be able to do, whatever he wants. That's probably one of the reasons he's got over 8 million subscribers. And one of the reasons he's pretty popular. But that's just my silly little opinion. The Joe Rogan experience has become one of the internet's foremost vectors for anti-wokeness, wrote Justin Peters in Slate, and I am all for that because this channel here does not like anything woke whatsoever in any way, shape, or form. In 2018, Rogan's show hit the headlines when the host shared a cannabis joint with Telsa boss Elon Musk after which the company stocks fell by 9%. Now, think of what you want about Elon Musk, but I think this was kind of cool. Why not? Cannabis is legal in a lot of places, so... No big deal. And I'm going to assume wherever the tape in the show, it was legal there. So, more power to them. Sanders faces ire over Joe Rogan endorsement. Rogan has been credited as being an unlikely political influencer by the New York Times due to his reach. Yeah, no shit. I mean, anyone who's got millions of active followers has some pretty good reach and influence. In January, he informed his legions of followers that he would probably vote for Bernie, referring to the then Democratic Party candidate Bernie Sanders who received increased press coverage as a result. However, since Joe Biden became the party's presumptive nominee, Rogan has said he is more likely to vote for President Trump. Well, as you guys know, I don't get political, but I'll say this here this one time. Some things I saw from Biden looked a little strange. He was kind of mincing words and it didn't feel like the Biden I knew when he was with Obama as the VP. But I digress. I'm not voting. I don't vote in America. 
So, you guys are free to decide. Why is this deal significant? The kind of figures involved in the deal are incredibly rare in the podcast world, and Rogan will now likely earn more money than most musicians on Spotify. Joe Rogan just got paid the equivalent value of over 26 billion streams for a podcast license, wrote Tom Gray, director of the Royalties, Music Copyright and Licensing Society, PRS for Music. A musician would need to generate 23 billion streams on Spotify to earn what they're paying Joe Rogan for his podcast rights, added music writer Ted Gioia. <laughs> However you say that last name, guys, first time seeing it for me. Gioia suggested this means Spotify values Rogan more than any musician in the history of the world. That's interesting. TV critic and broadcaster Scott Bryan predicted the deal could lead the way to others, but noted that the exclusivity clause would leave many fans locked out. It might do what Sky did for a lot of shows, he tweeted, lift them up, but put them behind the wall that the culture mostly then ignores. So you guys see this video, and it comes through clean, but I said this word like six times, so if I mess that up too, it's getting late. We're moving on. Although Rogan has said the podcast will still be free to access, Spotify will be hoping the increased traffic to its service will lead to a significant increase in subscriber numbers. It is generally difficult to make large amounts of money in the crowded world of podcasts, as most podcasts are free to download, many presenters and producers attempt to make money from endorsements and advertising. A platform exclusive deal such as this is very rare. Now, here's what I want to say about this. I am a pretty big Howard Stern fan. I don't think anything's ever changed that. I've been listening to Howard Stern for a really long time, since I was like getting a ride to high school from my mother. Really long time. Now, if you guys remember, Howard Stern used to be on regular radio, and he made the move to satellite radio sometime in the middle of his career. Something like that. Okay? But even though I was like such a huge fan, I didn't want to get serious. I didn't have the money, I didn't want a subscription, and that was that. Even though, like I said, I was a huge, huge, fucking huge Stern fan. For me, it was more about having the platform and what comes with it than following one person off of a platform onto another platform. Having said that, if you got a bunch of bank and, you know, a $25 subscription or $9 subscription or whatever, doesn't matter, maybe you follow that person. Or if you just like have everything, Spotify, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, everything, then maybe you follow them. But for me, I don't really use everything and jump around so much, so I don't know. I don't really follow people off platforms specifically for them. Maybe it'll happen one day. If it was like a friend of mine, yeah, I'll do that because I know him or something, but I don't know. I can't see myself doing it. But then again, who knows? It's all speculation. Anyway, I'm doing shout outs, special thanks, things like that. If you're not subscribed here, consider subscribing. If you do, I'll be happy. If you don't, I guess I'll be pretty sad, but I'll get over it. I'll make another video. Life goes on. See you next time. Central Park.